Oh, there they are. The final cut sheets for our timber frame. They were produced by the Shelter Institute, which is where we went for our timber framing class back in April. This is exactly what they provided in the class. And once I saw this, it dawned on me how in the heck 24 complete strangers were going to build a frame over the course of a week. And at the end of the week, it was all going to fit. What you have here is a per piece cut list. Every single member of the frame is spelled out in exact dimensions. And we're excited to start working through that. Before that can happen though, I think it's only wise to do a pretty substantial amount of planning. The sawmill goofing off kind of stops here. Uh, I think I counted the number of full size timbers that are in this frame is somewhere around 85. And every single one of those timbers needs to be accessible during the timber framing workshop. On top of that, we've got braces that are not included in that number. I don't remember, there's like 30, 33 braces, something like that. The next few days, I don't know that we're gonna get a whole heck of a lot of saw milling done. We need to do a pretty substantial amount of planning. One of those, what I'm gonna work on today, is making sure that our sawmill is in good working order and it's cutting straight. And then uh, over the next few days, I'm going to spend a little time with this monster load of logs and kind of get familiar with it. What I've done is I've taken the time to go through this entire set of shop drawings and on my phone, I've created a list of the number of logs, ideally, that we would need to cut these members. Our logs are coming to us 28 feet from the logger. And of course they're in different sizes. So that's gonna take some adjusting. And then additionally, they all have a little bit of character. No, none of these logs are just perfectly straight. They've all got a little bit of cruck, or maybe the butts kind of are oversized on them. And so getting the timbers out of those logs is gonna take some effort. And then probably, maybe the most important thing is where do all these timbers go once we're done cutting them? So we've gotta do some property planning and make sure that we've kinda of got everything organized and situated. We've gone through so many phases of building that we've kinda of got these materials here and plumbing here and ICFs here and rebar there and lumber over here. And so we're overdue for a big kind of property cleansing or cleanup. And that will be imperative so that we don't end up moving all of these timbers multiple times. So I think this uh, probably through the weekend, probably four days minimum are gonna be spent doing that. So it brings me back to today. Recently, when we cut the posts for our garage, we had a weird issue with the wood miser. We set the cut depth to say eight inches down here, and it would be eight inches. But as you get to the middle, there'd be a half an inch extra, eight and a half inches. And then down here on the end, eight inches. The sawmill was cutting like pot belly, if you will. So we immediately got on the phone with our good friend Rob from Woodmiser and kind of shared with him the situation. And we spent a day and a half fine tuning the bed and doing all this stuff to make sure that our calibration was good. You know, beds were level, they're well supported, all the basics. And we feel really good about the sawmill. We brought our laser out here and we lasered across the beds and did all this preliminary work. What we don't know right now is whether or not we have two bed sections that have a cross member that seems to be miscalibrated. We've marked them. If you remember, they were kind of out in the middle of the sawmill. One was down there and one was down here. We spent a bunch of time taking those and moving them to the ends to almost exclude them from the cutting area so that we could get our post straight. But what we need to get to the bottom of is whether or not they are in fact miscalibrated. It's so rare that that would happen on a wood miser that there's still that um, question whether or not it's something we've done have we adjusted our legs wrong or is something else awry? So that's what I'm gonna work on today, trying to isolate whether these cross members, which we've marked with arrows, 
are in fact off or maybe we solved the problem when we went through and did all this housekeeping on the sawmill. So I think what I'm gonna do today is try to cut a log here and see if we get anything fishy going on and spend a little time. Um, I guess let me back up. We've already done a phenomenal amount of measuring. We've taken a square and a level and we've tape measured every single cross member to the blade. We've checked it across to the side rails. We've checked them across each other. We've tried to do all this stuff. And it's just, it's so funny how, if there is an issue there, it is minuscule. But across 27 feet, 28 feet, it presents itself in a odd shaped timber. One of the tools that we'll be using a lot coming soon is a logger's tape. We actually picked this up during the estate sale um, where we got all those tools. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Gentleman had a lot of the tools that we needed for building a home. Normally I'd be using just a rev regular everyday, you know, fat max tape measure. But a logger's tape has a spike on the end and a belt loop. So it really allows for almost a no hands operation. Even though I'm just gonna be doing some kind of diagnosing with the sawmill, I still don't wanna waste this log. And I know that there are some better methods out there for uh, what I'm trying to accomplish. But maybe you can see that down here about, oh, say two thirds of the length of this log, that butt starts to turn. So I wanna measure that, how much straight log we have and then figure out whether I wanna actually just cut that butt off and keep uh, a longer straight section. If I mill this at full length, what'll happen is I'm going to lose a large portion of this log because if I start cutting flat, I'm not gonna to get to the meat of the log until somewhere around here. And you can see that I'd be giving up all this useful uh, timber. So this is one of those things that we're going to have to learn over the next few weeks is how to maximize each log. So it looks like where the crook begins, I'm at about 16 feet. That's probably the absolute max that I can get before I start losing log space. Which means that this section over here should be right at 12 feet. Because we have several 12 foot members, we actually wanna oversaw or overcut our members so that we have what's called relish or a little bit of extra wood just in case we cut crooked or you know we wanna pick what we want out of the tree. So at 16 feet, that's pretty good. And then we'd have a 12 footer on that end. So if I kind of split the difference and, and mill somewhere in here, it looks like back here is about where I'm gonna get the maximum thickness out of that log, which means that it looks like I might only get 11 feet at full, full width. So again, lots of decision making been several months ago but one of our viewers recommended buying a piece of Lexan like this and marking out you know the ideal timber sizes like uh, 6 by 6 6 by 8 you know 8 by 8 8 by 10 etc and then I would have a quick reference that I could throw up on a log and figure out what the ideal timber to cut out of that log would be I think I'll do that in a future video because I need to focus on getting this sawmill diagnosed. Just in case we do have an issue, we can get some uh, replacement bed sections on the way. So based on my timber needs, there's a couple of eight by eight posts that we need that are 10 feet. So since we've got, you know, a little less than 12 feet here, an eight by eight would work, but that seems like a tragic waste of that much log there. Six by eights, which are our floor joists, we would need quite a few in the uh, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half range. So that's cutting it close, but they're six by eights. So if I could get an eight by 12, I could cut two six by eights. It's very deceiving because the butt of this log is so big. But down here, I'm only going to be able to deal with, well, we might be at uh, 14 almost 15 inch diameter. So it would be very close. Then down here, this one was 16 feet, a little bit under. Um, eight by 10, mm, might be pushing it. The other end of that log doesn't look super big. Six by eights for sure. Eight by eights, pretty sure. So this log has about a uh, 
13 inch diameter. So there's, there's definitely an eight by 10 in there. So far, I have a very poor method for doing this. What I'm trying to do is center the center of this log with the center of the butt. And I need to do some testing with this, but I'm going to actually draw out the largest possible timber that I can get out of this log on the skinny end. And then I'm gonna double check that where my cut will be on the top here, and where the cut will be on the top there are exactly in the same spot. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm trying not to make this video too complicated, but basically you don't want to saw through these logs at an angle like this because you sever the grain when you do that. You want to saw in line with the grain. It creates a much stronger piece. By raising this off the bed, I'm centering the, the log here so that when I cut, I'm cutting right down the middle of the log. And I'm gonna get some weird boards on the side and that's just fine. All right, I'm just revisiting my notes here because I kind of forgot already what I was trying to get. And I think we're trying to get an eight by 12 out of this so that we can produce two floor joists that are somewhere in maybe the low 11 foot range or even 11 and a third, something like that. So, um, 8 by 12, there's certainly the height, the overall height is about, is a little over 15 inches. So the question is, at 8 inches, can we get something that's 12 inches tall? So here's 8 inches, but um, let's be a little conservative. And I'm, I'm being extremely rudimentary with this, so I'm going to go to like 8 and a half. Somewhere in there and somewhere in there. Can we get something that's 12 inches tall? So there's 12 inches. I'll have to say that it will be very close. And you can see how much of this log that we're gonna lose in the process. But maybe we can make something useful out of that, I'm not sure. It's good to remember that this is the skinny side of the log. By the time we get down here, those pieces, you know, if we're cutting here, you know, this might be two and a half inches maybe here. But by the time we get down there, it could be over four inches or even more. So there may be some four by sixes in the butts of these, this tree that we can use to make braces out of. And I think that's our, our theory with this is that we're not going to dedicate a tree to braces, only attempt to use leftover material and then cut our brace material out of that. I have a hunch that between all of this, we're gonna get a bunch of lumber and a bunch of brace material. According to the Kant size calculator on Forestry Forum, the minimum log diameter to get an eight by 12 is 14.4 inches and we had 15. So I think if I'm good at what I'm doing here, we'll easily get our eight by 12.
this is the first chance I'll have to kind of check my calibration. So this rail is the high rail. And what I'm trying to figure out is if it's higher, even by the tiniest of margins, than these rails. And I don't, man, there is a gap under there. But like I said, it's extremely small. So I may move this camp down a little ways so that it has the potential to rock. I'm just kind of paranoid. Well, I guess we're still okay to do it because I've got enough thickness in this that if it makes a boo-boo, I, I can still correct it. But if I start getting down to my thickness, I'm not gonna mess around. It's just too valuable. It's too much time invested to waste it. So this is where we stand. These pencil marks are my ideal timber. And this is actually a little bit generous. So I think my marks are at nine inches. So if I have to, I can come in a half an inch. I'm just gonna say it's gonna be really close to get an eight by 12 out of this guy. You can kind of see the timber taking shape here. It's very narrow on this end. But as we go this direction, it gets much larger. So in here is where there's a small chance we can get some four by six material. It won't be much, but it could be, you know, five, six feet, I don't know. So it's kind of disappointing. So after I got the bark all removed, there's definitely a four by six in there, but it's not going to be very long. Maybe about 24 inches or so, which just isn't long enough for a brace. I might cut that down uh, into like inch and a half lumber. I don't know. Maybe I'll just pull it off the mill for right now and deal with it later. I'm still trying to achieve the uh, calibration test. As you can see, it's not exactly a small matter. If nothing else, this is shaping up to be an absolutely beautiful set of floor joists. So here's where we're at. Here's our 8 dimension and our 12 dimension. It's actually over 8 inches here, so if we need to come down a little extra, we can. good news and bad news. The good news is that end to end this beam is exactly the same thickness. At this point it doesn't appear that that bed rail down there is compromising this area of the mill. I haven't obviously tried the other side yet. The bad news is it doesn't look like we're getting an 8 by 12 out of this. This wane right here, this was a really uh, kind of a dip in the log, but it was on the top. It was shaped like this. So I was measuring over here and over here, but there was an ever so slight crotch. And I can still reduce the width of this because I'm at nine and a half inches, but the narrowest part of this right here is only about seven inches. So unless I wanted to have wane on one side, I won't be able to get two floor joists out of this. So I'm gonna look back at my list and see if there's anything like in the 10 by 10 or um, 8 by 10 uh, range because this would make an absolutely perfect 8 by 10. So in reviewing my cut list, the only 8 by 10s that we have are 13 feet and 25 feet. This one's not long enough. So I've concluded that I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to eight inches. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into six by eights. My thinking is that there's wane on one edge. And if I can get three sides of that floor joist to have zero wane, I'm pretty sure it'll be okay if there's a tiny bit of wane on one side of that joist.
inches. And a snivel over the plane, right? By six inches. First couple of floor joists. So this part of this log is sneaky. So it's got a huge gap right here, probably inch and a half gap. And down there, probably two thirds of the way is where it's resting. And on the other end, there's probably an inch gap. So even though it looks fairly straight, this tree has another little bend in it at about two thirds. And so what I'm wondering is whether or not I can get, you know, a full dimension timber out of it. So there's probably a pretty solid eight by eight in here. And let's see when we transfer that line to the other side where it actually ends up. Eight by eights, we need 12 footers, 10 footers, and 12 footers and then we need some 19 footers we'll probably try to yield some 12 footers because it's just shy of 16 feet and then that'll leave us enough for um, knee braces looks like we need four foot and five foot material for knee braces Someone hasn't been sawmilling all day. Well, that's one of our posts. Is it really? And as typical, end up with just a ridiculous amount of lumber. It's really frustrating because I thought for a second I'd get an 8 by 10 out of that darn tree. But it had the weirdest little dip in it like that. And so on the ends, I could have got an 8 by 12. But out in the middle, it was 8 inches. So I end up cutting all this 2 by lumber because there's also not enough wood to make four by. So I guess we're gonna, when we get all done with this, we'll, we'll stick build a house. Nice work, Liv. Hey, this turned out really good. And I have to say that setting up the mill with a laser, good. oh really? my gosh, what a time savings. Wow. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh no. Well, apparently the president wants to talk to me. Again? Keeps calling me. Should grab the broom really quick and just okay. give that a light sweep so we can reveal the gorgeousness. I also have to say my purpose in making this whole video was to try to figure out whether or not our bed sections were in fact miscalibrated. And we didn't, you didn't, you don't know. I can't tell because I can't mill that far. Yep. I haven't milled a log yet that's straight and that's um, 27 feet long. Is so. That I don't know if we'll have a 27 foot longer. So. We will because we have rafters to cut and they're 25 and a half feet minimum. So we have to cut a 27 foot log. That's every inch of bed section that we have. The good news is for now, I'm happily cutting, you know, 20 feet. No problem. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up because Alyssa tells me that she made some Pinterest food. I made something different. She made something from Pinterest. I made Tex-Mex. Tex Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? I 100% guarantee you, as soon as you plane this wood, oh it's gosh, just going to be, be redonk. So we have a new to us 12 inch wide beam planer coming. We searched nationwide Craigslist and there was one of them in what state? Was it Ohio? I don't know. Uh, Iowa? Ohio? Former timber framer. Yeah. Former retired timber framer was letting go of all his tools and he had all the gadgets that we needed. So we've got our beam planer on the way. So Alyssa is gonna get flat sick of planing lumber. So today's yield, we can check two or three things off the list. Yeah, that's good, that's... Two floor joists and one post. The bad news is the timber frame workshop is in three and a half weeks. Oh, gosh, I'm so like, there are, I feel nauseous when I think about it. There are 85 members in our frame that are not braces. If you do the math, that's hustle. an average of five pieces a day, which means three ain't gonna cut it. 
No. But three is a good start I, because... I'm, I'm hoping, like, well, we have to be fine one way or another, but I'm yeah. hoping between the two of us, this can literally be, be running around the clock. Today was actually very productive because my goal was not to make timbers. My goal was to diagnose the sawmill. Right. And the good news is we don't have to wait for bed sections. We can start yep. sawmilling tomorrow morning. Heck and yes. that's that's a huge uh, so big deal. But I will say that that big fatty right there on the bottom, that big fat guy, oh, look at that. Fatty fat. That thing's that fat. fat. It's fat and straight. <laughs> that guy, I 100% guarantee you, is probably going to become a very long piece of timber, probably 23 to 25 foot. So that will be our chance to really give yeah. the uh, bed sections but, a workout. But I, I'm kind of afraid to test it, you know? Yeah. We gotta wrap this video up though. Yep. I've been drumming on about wood and sawdust. Wait, I forgot. Someone told us that we should name this video Man Glitter. So I'm gonna ask Alyssa to hopefully put Man Glitter in the title. I will. All right, we're off to dinner. Thanks for coming out and yep. touching our woods.